This is a Relay Project. Real Talk starts right now. Here's Ryan Jesperson. Well, a very happy new year to you, Real Talkers. It's uh, Tuesday, January 3rd, and it's great to be back in the Real Talk studio bringing you Real Talk on news, politics, and pop culture with John Hicks, riding shotgun, the technical producer of the show. A very hey happy there. new year to you, my man. Happy new year to you as well. You uh, you put your money where <laughs> your mouth was this morning, and you, and, did you, and you started the day at a fitness oh center. Oh, my gosh. It was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's, it was not fun. No? It, you know, it was busy even at like 6 in the morning, and it just... You know, trying to go back to a gym like I used to be in really good shape and I'm not anymore. You're in pretty good shape, Johnny, I think. Uh, come on. But like I need to, <laughs> you know, things start to hurt in your body. You're like, I got to go back to the gym. Then you get in there and you're like, what does this lever do? How do I pull this? I don't know what I'm doing. I look ridiculous. So that was today. I think that like veteran gym goers, mm-hmm. is that what you call them? I don't even know. <laughs> I'm not a member of the community. But, I think that's the most polite way to but, say but, it. But the veterans, I think, uh, actually dread the first few weeks of, of January every single year. They and they're going to say, they're going to put on the face and they're going to say, we're so glad you're here and we're so glad you're joining us. But really they're like, get the hell out of our gym. Yeah. But they know that they know that the majority of people that are there today and tomorrow mm-hmm. will be gone in three weeks. Not to be the pessimist. Yeah. And I actually saw a tweet. I should bring it up from a gym that was not accepting memberships on the first of January. Really? They waited till the second and it was kind of like an F you to, <laughs> they put up a, a, a post that said basically, Hey, you know, January for us starts tomorrow. We're not let, you know, flooding our gym with all these new people on the first day. Thought, they go, we know how this is going to go. Mean. We've seen it before. They've seen it before. Well, I like it. it it's realistic. How was your, how was your holiday break? We, we, we took a, uh, our last show on December 22nd, which feels like ages ago. Yeah. Uh, last Thursday, or not last Thursday, but Thursday, the 22nd of December, Sean Canungo joined us in studio. If anybody missed it, they have. I know that some people were in full holiday swing by then, but they have to check that episode out. Sean is, uh, can, can I say, dare I say, the most dynamic personality that's probably ever joined <laughs> us in the two-year history of Real Talk? He just fired it up from the get-go. Like, when he came in, he was like, hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, Good morning, up, guys? Blah, blah. How's it going? And then as soon as the cameras were on, he was like, oh. It was like one of those drag strips. You, know, yeah. you see like the, the funny cars that as soon as the light goes green, they just like it's just smoke and tires and Zero he hit the 60. ground running with uh, some great observations on mm. on sort of, I don't know, maximizing your potential and developing a great perspective and and uh, overcoming self-doubt and just really wonderful stuff that I know a lot of people focus on. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I went back and watched it again over the break and I found myself, my, you know, sometimes you're watching something and you realize your face starts to hurt from smiling. The cheeks. I was just smiling. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time I was watching him. And then, of course, we had our, our, our specific uh, and special episode, an exclusive episode for our Patreon supporters on Friday, December 23rd, mm-hmm. which is always a lot of fun. That was great. Uh, I was in here wearing a hoodie and a toque, and, uh, <laughs> and and that was sort of like just hours after a scotch exchange that we had hosted for our buddies. And so we had, we had like a nice casual morning of, yeah. of, of checking in and chatting with uh, a lot of the real talkers that, that make a monthly commitment to the show, and that was always a lot of fun. And then we basically went radio silent. You and I didn't even, we didn't bug each other on our phones. We didn't chat. We well, didn't you connect. told me. I said I was going to come in. I I'll said, talk to you over the dare. break. You said, I don't want to see you till the third. I said, are you sure? <laughs> no offense to you, you said, but you, you just said, said, you have a hard time relaxing. I did. And so I did it. And then me and my wife were talking about it last night. She's like, you're in a weird state. And I was like, I just... Like a week is good, 10, 11 days. I don't know. What is I it? Just, you get restless? It's too or? much. I got to get back. You know, I got to get back to into things. So you're, you're kind of like. I a, was worried about today. And then we came in. Look, everything's great. Everything's great. Yeah, <laughs> knock on wood. <laughs> don't say it out loud, man. But you know what I mean? You're like, you get anxious. You get. Of course. You get idle hands. And yeah. Well, you start to wonder, like, do are we going to remember how to do a show? Mm. Are we going to remember, uh, you know, how things roll out and everything? Charles Adler, of course, you, if you ever need a steadfast influence, you go to the uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award winner, <laughs> Charles Adler, the Emmy Award winner, that's going to join us in just a few minutes. Did you see what he tweeted on New Year's Eve? I saw yeah. his Rachel Notley endorsement. Uh, mm-hmm. This is a this is a long time, and, and Charles has has been pretty open about his journey. But but for like for, for perspective, for for those of you that might not be aware, that may not have been you know tuned into the AM radio. Dot, uh, for, for the last, I don't know, 30 years, Charles was 
Canada's conservative broadcaster. He was mm-hmm. Canada's conservative talk show host, and uh, and so uh, 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 an an out and out endorsement of the NDP in Alberta just about five and a half months out of an expected election. And I'm going to keep saying an expected election, by the way, friends. I know that Alberta's Premier Danielle Smith has said, she said it on this show sitting in the chair right next to me, that she's going she's gonna to stick to the fixed election date. She said there would be no reason for her to, to, to try to sort of pull shenanigans, uh, to try to, to steer away or to avoid or to prolong, uh, to postpone the election date that was set by her predecessor, Jason Kenney. So we'll, but, but in politics, you know, crazier things have happened, right? And so I'm going to keep referring to it as Alberta's expected election date coming up in, in May of this year now, 2023. But, but uh, you know, ish, five and a half, six-ish months out, Charles Adler officially endorsing uh, Rachel Notley's NDP. And the tweet got a lot of traction. I mean, I, I don't want to sound like, you know, a, a, a nerd and a geek, John. Uh, I don't want to start focusing on the numbers well, too much. There. Was it but, the budget uh, one? There are a about? couple. And, and I want to, and we'll get into this as well, because because a lot of people are saying that that Chuck has flip-flopped. And, and we'll get into this with him uh, in a little bit. He was, he was very critical of Rachel Notley about four years ago, back in 2018. And we'll dig up some of those old tweets when we talk to him in a few minutes, because, you know, first of all, uh, you know, I I think that a show called Real Talk should, I don't know, keep it real. And so we'll ask him. He says it's not a flip-flop. We'll ask him how is it not a flip-flop, and, and we'll get into to, to how Rachel Notley earned his endorsement. But check this out. Um, he tweets, and we'll get into it with him in just a few minutes. He says, I support Rachel Notley's campaign to return Albertans to normalcy. And, and like, I don't know, 697,000 views of the tweet? Like, that's not bad. Yeah, I 700,000 tweet views of the tweet? I'm liking the view ad there that's one, a new one, part on one twitter thing hey elon's done right there is you want to sometimes you, you put out a tweet and you think you're just yelling into a vacuum and nobody heard you but it's kind of cool to see how many people you know how, how many eyes have glanced on it mm-hmm. have you set uh, a new year's resolution or are you the type to do it well i i i, I just said i was gonna get back in shape like i'm not gonna you know do some crazy diet and go to the gym eight days a week yeah <laughs> So that's it's going to be but the health and wellness focus for you. A little this bit year. more, like at least three times a week, getting back in the gym, yeah. and uh, yeah, I think that's about it. You said something. Well, so well, never... I saw your one, your minimalist thing. Oh yeah, so I'm doing that. That is, yeah, I, I guess I guess that's a New Year's resolution. I try to do it in in either December or January of every year. Mm-hmm. Some years have been more successful than others. Uh, some years I've made it through all thirty or thirty-one days, depending on the month, and, and others I've kind of petered out, to be honest. But this this minimalist game, I I learned it or I picked it up from Fish Grakowski. It looks you remember cool. Fish and Trevor Anderson joined us in studio for mm-hmm. a, a really wonderful uh, kind of. It was like an arts focused episode of Real Talk. We didn't talk any politics. It was great. Uh, and by the way, the downloads on that episode of the podcast were like triple our yeah. average, <laughs> which said something to me about about maybe a, a bit of a hunger that a pretty significant part of this audience has to take the odd break from from news and politics which was mm-hmm. great but I digress so here's so here's the the premise of it and you can if you follow me on Twitter or if you follow me on Instagram at Ryan Jesperson you'll see every day on my stories I'm going to be posting the update uh, it's an accountability really mm-hmm. to post it um, and I'm only two days in but so far I'm two for two uh, so it's easy at the beginning and here's the deal you're, you're basically purging stuff you don't need you're 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 decluttering. That's the basic premise of it. So on the first of the month, you get rid of one item. On the second of the month, you get rid of two. And so on and so on and so on until the end of the month. 30? I think it's, I think it's, we yeah, have 31. So I think at the end of the month, it's 496 items you'll have gotten rid of. Now, I already know I'm saving because some days you, you it's tough. It's really tough. For some people that have no emotional attachment to, to items, it will not be difficult. But you do. I you really have, do. Have- I know you. And even yesterday at <laughs> two, I'm sitting there at two being like, what can I get rid of? And I was looking at these pillows downstairs in our storage room, like p- patio pillows for patio furniture. Doesn't The color doesn't match our motif anymore. They're a little bit beaten up around the edges. But what am I thinking? I'm thinking, well, what if we have some sort of like outdoor? <laughs> what if we have like a festival or some party where people want pillows to sit on? And then I'll, and I'll think back, well, I had all the pillows and then I threw them out. So the pillows lived another day. They'll be gone by the end of the month, I guarantee it. Yesterday, I took two hot sauces 
okay. that had been sitting in the condiment tray of our fridge. And those were really that old that you said? So I had those condiments. I'm a big condiment guy. Like I like to have five kinds of mustard. I like to have a couple options for mayo, you know, like an olive oil infused mayo. Sure. Maybe, maybe a chipotle mayo. Okay. You know, there's like the grainy mustard, the Dijon mustard, the honey mustard. You Standard. get the idea. I like that. You know, and uh, so these two hot sauces, I'm looking at them, one of them like a lime cilantro hot sauce, which I'm sure was fine. And then the other one from Hana, if you ever been to the highway to Hana on on Maui. And so, of course, I have memories attached to the bottle of hot sauce, which is kind of fucked up in a way. (laughs) And I'm looking at both these bottles and I and and I needed two items for the second of January. And I thought, I think I think it might be time to get rid of these two bottles of hot sauce. I had them in our condo. I, I, I had the truth is. We got married in 2009. I had both hot sauces before we were married. These hot sauces are over a decade old. The hot sauces are almost more than 15 years old. <laughs> this surprises me. <laughs> but, like, I, I don't this... think hot sauce goes bad. No, and this is why I've kept it forever. If we had something in our fridge, like, two years old, my wife would be, like, it would be gone. And I Carrie, wouldn't even have to. And and this is kind of the constant. And this is why, like, she, I'm very lucky to have her in my life because she's very, like. She knows you. She's not an enabler, but she she works with me. <laughs> and she, so so she's she's been eyeing up these hot sauces for years. And a couple of times they've been out on the counter. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. Like, what's, whoa, whoa, whoa. Because I'm thinking at some point someone's going to come over and they're going <laughs> to want, like, a lime. So they're going to, someone's going to come over and say, you don't happen to have, like, a lime cilantro hot sauce, do you? Well, actually, but on the flip side, I'm thinking if they knew like you can't serve someone 15 year old hot sauce. Last question. Okay. They've been in your fridge. We moved them from decade, the condo to the house. You haven't used them in over a decade. Uh, oh, that's a fair question. I mean, put it this way. I, I, I tried to open the bottle of the Hana hot sauce. It's like a pineapple habanero hot sauce. And I couldn't get the <laughs> I couldn't get the lid off. So it's I mean, it's been it's been a it's while. A it's been a hot minute. <laughs> So that'll be it. So I'm gonna. So I, I have to declutter. Mm-hmm. I have to. Um, I already know. Like the 31st of the month, I think is going to be orphan socks. Okay. Like you want to hold some in the back pocket because you know there's things that Rotate you know, in days are ones. tough. Days are tough. So I know that we're going to be getting rid of. But it's also a great time to or a great opportunity to kind of help out for example i mean all of us have like some fleeces or old winter coats or gloves or toques that we're not using that, that obviously social agencies can use and things like that so so some of the stuff will get trashed some of it'll get donated it's a good time to donate like my wife put out all our old not sentimental but christmas dishes and stuff because we went and got new ones this year oh it's yeah only two of us so like we buy two bowls two plates two whatever so we took all the old stuff and she donated it which is you know that's what you got to do. You gotta yeah, do, man. You got to declutter. But I might. I don't know if I could do thirty-one things. Of course you can. The- well, I. But I don't know actually because I don't because maybe if you're already organized, and if and if you already We're pretty. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, you might not have you know and and four hundred ninety-six items. Right. For me, I mean, I could do four hundred. <laughs> I don't know if I could do it. My thing is I need somebody to come in and do it for. I need to go on a vacation, come home, and find out mm. that someone had their way and like went through and purged the closet and purged everything. Well, I can't wait to see because one is easy, two is easy. I can't wait to like 14, 15. That's the thing. <laughs> and then if you get rid of like, yeah, on the 17th, you get rid of 17 items. Well, tomorrow you got to get rid of 18 more. <laughs> So I'll start getting off on technicalities at some point. You can call me out. At some point, you'll see me go through like old CDs, and I'll be yeah. like, 15 CDs. The next day, 16 CDs. Here's C- 19 peanuts I had <laughs> in a jar in the truck. Like- but still, this is <laughs> this is the idea, right? Yeah, is that is, is that you every single day, you got, you got to force yourself to get rid of something. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to... You breathe easier at the end of the month, right? Uh, Real Talkers, let us know what you're getting up to with regards to New Year's resolutions. It feels kind of cliche, and I know a lot of people push back and say, I don't really do it, but but there's nothing quite like that fresh start that comes with a new year. Uh, well, ask Charles Adler if, if, if he's a New Year's resolution <laughs> type guy. Coming up in just a little bit, we're really excited, of course, to enter this new year with some partnerships w- with really incredible sponsors in place, and that includes a long-term partnership with our friends at Complete Care Restoration. If you watch the show on YouTube, you see uh, through these cameras the absolutely beautiful studio that we're coming at you out of uh, in Edmonton's historic Mercer Warehouse. This studio was built uh, from start to finish by the team at Complete Care Restoration. <laughs> They're our only sponsor that hopes you never call them. They really hope you never call them. Why? Because Well, because they do fire damage and, and, and flood damage and asbestos removal mitigation. All the stuff, when your disaster happens, they come in and, well, they make it better. 
So here's the deal. Though they hope you never call them, if you do experience, heaven forbid, a fire or a flood or, or something else, you know, your insurance company, uh, chances are you get to tell them who you'd like to do the work. And we recommend you go with the team at Complete Care Restoration. You can find them online at completecarerestoration.ca. If you're also, I mean, looking through those cameras and, and, and maybe you're quietly wondering to yourself, when are Jespo and Johnny going to put the Christmas trees away? Never! Well, when Ukrainian <laughs> Christmas wraps up, my ah, friend. I see. Yeah, that's right. A big shout out to our Ukrainian friends that are celebrating their Christmas. Our friends at Friesen Brothers have a wonderful Ukrainian Christmas dinner coming up this Saturday and Sunday. That's January 7th and 8th from 4 to 8 p.m. A special all-you-can-eat Ukrainian feast including roasted turkey, Ukrainian sausage, pierogies, of course, cabbage rolls, and, and so much more. It's just $25 per person at all Friesen Brothers Fresh Market stores, and you can check out more on their website, Friesen.com. If you're in the business of event management or event planning, maybe you're an entrepreneur, a retailer, whether it's a restaurant, a hotel, or something else, if you're in Alberta or Saskatchewan, you're going to want to get in touch with local environmental services. I guarantee that they're going to do better when it comes to service prices and support for local causes. Yeah, of course, they'll handle your garbage and recycling, but they're about a whole lot more than that. You can learn what makes them tick by visiting the Who is Local link at localenvironmental.ca. Don't forget Trash Talk coming up on Friday's show presented as always by Local Environmental Services. And how wonderful to connect with our friends at Apex Automation over the holidays. John and I, we've been regaling you with stories of their holiday party. We had so much fun. They're getting to know even more members of their team. You know, Apex is all about the people. People over profits. You kind of roll your eyes and you say, yeah, right. This is what companies say. These guys live it. They walk the walk. You can learn more about how they're making life better, not just for their clients, but for their employees by really investing in corporate culture. And they're always hiring. You can check out the careers link at apexautomation.ca. Well, our very first guest of 2023 is arguably the show's best friend. He joins us typically on Monday mornings, but we didn't want to have to wait a whole other week to connect with talk radio legend Charles Adler. My man, a very happy new year to you. It's nice to see your face. Happy new year. First thing we do is we, we do a mic check. Now, if we were doing this uh, absolutely the old fashioned way, we would have done this 20 minutes ago, but you, of course, were focused like a laser on your 15-year-old <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. hot sauces. So is this microphone, this Yeti microphone... Crystal clear, Chuck. Grapple? Your dulcet tones I'm are fine. ushering in a new year I'm here. I want to do it right because it's one of my resolutions this year. Are you a I resolution it, guy? Well, I, I, I am in a sense. I mean, I, 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 I want every year my, my resolution is to stay as close to my values as, as possible. And, and one of them is good audio. And I, I wasn't proud that uh, for a number of weeks, I was a slacker. Well, you know, I'm just uh, not really in a radio studio and I'm not this. No, no excuses. I, mean, I want I want this audio to be as pristine as possible. It matters to me. I like it. Well, I, and I know the, the, the real talkers that subscribe to the podcast and that tune in on YouTube will appreciate it as well. Did you or were you there? Are you are you like Johnny that that has a hard time relaxing that was like eager yeah. to get back at it and start talking <laughs> yeah. again? I got to tell you, when I caught up yesterday, I really wasn't comfortable with the idea that this was a Monday and I wasn't doing this. I saw that. Just, you know, I even I even took a, a swing at you. It was a kind of a passive aggressive swing. And uh, I'll just I'll just apologize, uh, you know, for that. No, there's I mean, no need I to apologize. Was, I don't think of you as the post office. I mean, <laughs> I understand the post office and the banks and, you know, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, I have a free enterprise uh, people that we are. And I'm thinking, why am I not on with my free enterprise partner? I mean, yeah. I realize that the, the, the whack jobs, the right wing whack jobs want to call us uh, socialists and all the rest of it. But I mean, every small business person that we've ever done business with in, in Alberta or elsewhere knows that that's a, that's a crock of shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I believe your exact words were, if Costco's open, why isn't real talk? But, the, but see, this is, the, this, this is the difference. And I got no problem. You want real talk. You and Johnny are chomping at the bit. You guys are the horses that are kicking the walls in the stables, getting ready yeah. to go out. And, yeah, and, 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 and I'm the, and I'm run, the dog that's run. laying on his back waiting for his belly to be scratched. Guys, I had no problem. A friend of mine texted me, Charles, 
because a guy that I play men's league basketball with, he texted me uh, through the break and he said, you up for shooting hoops on Saturday? And I said, I don't know what day is it? And he just kind of rolled his eyes at me. I've never really had a hard time relaxing. It's never been a problem. Did we lose Chuck? Yeah. Did he? Oh, there he is. I need to ask you a question before we go any further, because I used to have hot sauce. And this was also part of my regimen, not just to check the mics, yeah. but to actually have some hot sauce. I'll give you a specific. The hot sauce that I had, my my mentor in the 70s, man, man named Paul Reed, the greatest broadcaster I ever met. Uh, Paul Harvey was the greatest broadcaster I never got to meet. But anyway, the two Pauls in my life. And of course, there's, there's always St. Paul, but that's a whole a different uh, story for a, a different show. But Paul Reed always put a little bit of a yellow hot sauce from Barbados, okay, on his tongue. And he had a little spoon. He had the, all these plastic spoons. You know, some people in today's age would think, oh, uh, uh, entertainer with spoons. It must be it. No, 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 no. It's not <laughs> not about powder. It's about Bajan hot sauce. They wrote a sound. A sound garden wrote a song about him, I think. But okay, I digress. <laughs> anyway, that that's what he did. And so for many, many years, that's what I did too. And I was, I was convinced that this would help the help the pipes uh, get as much uh, clarity as possible. And then I was told by a number of people that I was actually doing damage to myself by having this hot sauce. So anyway, I, I no, I didn't buy into that. But I was so heartened to know that you've got so much respect for hot sauce that even after 15 years, you won't throw it out. I don't. But I. But here's the thing: is like there's no when I try to explain uh, the the word I don't prefer because it, it pejorative is hoarder. Uh, I don't prefer the phrase hoarder. <laughs> I'm 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 more of a collector, uh? and uh, but but my collection uh, is unjustifiable. Oh, if I'm being honest, it's unjustifiable. Like, yeah. let me give you an example. The great Hal Johnson, who has joined us on this show before. Hal Johnson, Joanne McLeod, participation, keep fit, have fun. Everybody knows them. W- wonderful Canadians. Well, I I dressed up as Hal Johnson uh, for, for a Movember celebration many years ago. And I wore these ridiculous, like this is just one example out of a million I could give you. I wore these ridiculous white high tops and these blue short shorts. And I still have both items. Now, is it because I think I might dress up again uh, in, in that outfit for Halloween? I don't know. Is it because I'm going to wear the, that to the gym i most certainly not i don't know but i'm keeping them both for now i don't think they'll make it to the end of the month but i'm keeping them both for now because i just know it's murphy's law charles as soon as i throw out those short shorts as an example life's gonna tap me on the shoulder and i'm gonna need a pair of short shorts and i'm gonna have to go out and spend more money to buy another pair you know what i mean that's how my mind works well here here's how i look at your mind uh, what you have is Uh-oh. and we can talk about you know we don't the, the weird hoarding uh, that means nothing to me uh, you, when you make commitments, whether it's a commitment to an article of clothing, when it's a commitment to a hot sauce, or most important in my life, a commitment to a friend, and you have been my best friend in this business. In a few moments, we'll get into some of the the, the, the dark side of life, which is you sure. know, part of what, what created uh, the impetus for me to do the, the endorsement I did. I've, I've never been so into a campaign as I am into this one. And people say, you're not even living in Alberta. Well, anyway, we, we, we can talk about all that. But... All of this goes back to what I treasure the most about Ryan Jesperson. You have the gift of commitment. People can talk about commitment. I always used to use the example of, you know, bacon and eggs. You know, the the, the chicken is interested, but the pig is committed. You are the pig. (laughs) You are the pig in in the most, certainly not a pejorative, in the nicest way that I could possibly see uh, the commitment that that you have offered me and so many others in in your life. Obviously, your parents, your your family. Uh, we we don't like to you know get too self righteous and sacred on the show. I get it. The r- real talk, keep it real. But there's nothing more real to me than Ryan Jesperson's commitment to people, to ideas, to fellow podcasters and friends, and most important, most important from the perspective wow. of what we're talking about today, to the people of Alberta. Well, if, if you're lo- if you're looking for a friend of Alberta, it's Ryan Jesperson. And if you want to cast aspersions by using all the stupid slogans in the reply box, which to, to me, most mornings, looks like the scene of the Joker, just a bunch of sewage and, and wreckage. If you, if you want to apply that kind of logic and start calling him names, you're on your own, pal, because Ryan Jesperson is Alberta's best friend. Well, that's, that's- 
that's a hell of a thing to hear from you, and I really appreciate that, uh, Charles. And and we know that. I mean, it's going to be it's twenty twenty three is going to be a big year uh, for our home province. Uh, I hope in a good way. And uh, what that looks like remains to be seen. We'll be doing a lot of talking about it. We think it's going to be a big year for the show as well. Before we get into this, I'm just I'm doing this unprompted, but I, I shared this a few days ago. You know, you get the pop ups, the memories on yeah. your social media. And I and I shared something back on, on, on New Year's Eve ish on the 30th of December back in 2014. Uh, so like eight years ago, but uh, the speaker Steve Maraboli had had released this and, and it resonated with me. And I want to read it again. This is just a, sort of off the cuff, Charles, but this is just a wonderful, you know, you call it a, a charge, really, like at a wedding, you, you get the charge. Well, here's the charge for 2023. All right. Uh, live your truth. Express your love. Share your enthusiasm. Take action toward your dreams. Walk your talk. Dance and sing to your music. Embrace your blessings. Make today worth remembering. And I thought that that was pretty cool to reflect on as we head into a new year. Well, um, you know, it, it, it's important. Uh, it's important to be yourself. Uh, what we see out there, and one of the reasons there's a, a need for real uh, talk, is we see people regurgitating. It's one of the things that saddens me most about life you know people who refuse to think for themselves they don't have the self-confidence to do it and so they impersonate or regurgitate what they hear from others um it's not good for you so if i were you i would post what you received what you just read i would post it on twitter i post it on facebook on instagram wherever because the word has got to get out there that people have got to give themselves permission to be themselves and if you make a mistake once in a while apologize. I mean, I got sent after my endorsement of, of, of Rachel Notley, I got sent something that I tweeted about a year before that election. And that tweet was uh, uh, was tweeting Jason Kenney's guest column in the Calgary Sun. And I, and I will say it now out loud, unthinkingly, okay, because I was enamored of him. Okay, I was enamored of him and I wasn't doing my own thinking. I didn't do my own homework. I'll never get over that. I know people say, Chuck, get over it. I'm never getting over that, okay? Because it's a lesson for life, and it's a lesson that I want to share with everyone. So I unthinkingly tweeted a tweet, and I looked at it just a, a couple of days ago, and I decided I want to put the stuff in the shop window. I've made mistakes. I'm a public person. I've taken public positions. Some of them were, were just wrong, and I feel horrible about that, and I am Sorry, in an unqualified way. I am sorry that I did that. And that tweet was important for me to post in the shop window. So I yes, I retweeted on Twitter and I said, here it is, folks. Here's what I, I here's what I did. Okay, well let's take let's never, take a look I at it. Never do that again. Let's take a look at them. Okay, so here's one. This is yeah. this is from uh March twenty eighth of uh, March twenty uh, eighth of twenty eighteen, like you know, like almost five years ago, right? And it says Alberta government debt was thirteen billion when Notley's team took over three years ago. You say it's about to become ninety six billion. That's an increase of you know nearly six hundred and forty percent in only eight years. You, you talk about bankrupting Alberta. Don't give the NDP four more years. And then about a week after that, again twenty eighteen, uh, lifetime. I'm going politics. I'm not letting you off the hook. I'm just, these are facts. These are numbers. Uh, you said that, you know, Notley's budget a sales pitch to those who aren't paying attention. Uh, you said, you know, basically it's like a, a tanker of snake oil. And, uh, and a lot of folks thought that that was kind of an interesting, it was described as a flip flop when yep. uh, four and a half years later, when on just this past New Year's Eve, you decided to go public with uh, an endorsement of Rachel Notley. By the way, uh, let me ask you as an aside, typically, you know, broadcasters, although talk hosts are different, talk hosts are not news anchors, but it's typically somewhat unusual for, for broadcasters to go on the record with endorsements. Uh, was that through the course of your talk radio, your terrestrial radio career? How frequent were your endorsements or, or how sparse were they? I, I, I always endorsed, uh, sometimes endorsed a few months uh, earlier. Uh, sometimes I endorsed, uh, you know, a few weeks earlier. Week so you earlier. wanted your audience to know who you were voting for. Yeah, I always want my audience. I feel that's uh, the, the most honest approach because I don't like this idea that, oh, uh, Chuck Chuck is an objective uh, journalist, you know, like like the bingo caller on, on Global or CBC. or C No, I'm not. 
And by the way, when I say bingo caller, I'm not I'm not trying to put them down. They you know they 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 are calling it. Yeah, down they are. The middle, they are they're, sure they're, and all that kind of stuff. Just like a bit. Just I, I love bingo. So, but to me, bingo caller is not for sure. But I'm not a bingo caller. I love bingo, uh, but I'm not a bingo caller. <laughs> and so I'm careful. Not an, I'm not an objective journalist. I am a citizen. I'm a Canadian citizen. The article that I'm most proud of is my Canadian passport. And my Canadian passport, in my opinion, allows me to be a free person. So I don't put the the iron, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the irons on my legs, and I don't shackle myself to to this uh, this god of objectivity. I, I don't do that. I never pretend to. So I, I, when I when I vote for a certain person or I feel a certain way about a certain person, a certain party, a certain policy, I tell you just as I would if I were with you at the gym at the ball game, at whatever, you know, real talk. I'm a real person, and I really was nuts for Jason Kenney. And I took Jason Kenney's uh, data points and, and talking points and his facts and whatever, and I regurgitated them, okay? Mm-hmm. And I regurgitated them with my my personality, my stamp. But I was, in my opinion, okay, a tool. I turned myself into a tool of Jason Kenney. And once again, I'm sorry about that. And that that those tweets that you're looking at, that's precisely what you're looking at. And so I am partially responsible for everything else that I'm I'm not happy with as far as how movement conservatism is. Okay, but can I, I feel like I've got blood on my hands? Well, okay. I mean, I, that might be a little dramatic, and that oh, might sorry. that might be I, you. I that might be you taking on. A I little promoted. Bit more than- I I I, pr- I promoted Kennyism over over what I have much more respect for which is doing your homework and doing your homework on the person that you're you're celebrating. I you know I'm not a, I'm not I'm not a religious person, but I certainly don't believe in worshiping human beings whether they're politicians or anything else. You've got to do your homework and I didn't do enough homework and I Well, and, and that's I, I, all okay, I'll say okay, okay, but but listen, like if if more people, quite frankly, if more people uh could 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 publicly and on the record say yeah, like I felt this way once and then I did some research and I looked around me or an issue impacted somebody close to me. And then I thought about it and I reconsidered and now I feel differently. Like if more and more people could say that, I mean, I, I've said that about many issues in my life. And I think that like, imagine how better off we would be. I don't think it's some, I don't think people are owning you on t- I can understand why somebody was very excited um, imagine being the first person that dug up Charles Adler's tweet from 2018 uh, that was critical of Rachel Notley and called her a snake oil salesman after he endorsed her five years later but like things change you talk to somebody yeah, that bought a Ford and then the Ford broke down fixed or repaired daily if you know what I mean and then they went and switched over to a Chevy that's not a big own no, the person no. had a life experience and they changed their mind but Ryan, I was I was conned. I allowed myself to be conned back. And look, the most important, as as you know from my my whole life, my most important issue is equality. Okay, we are all equal. And why is that my most important issue? Because I come from a heritage where my people, hardworking, honest people, were told one day that they are no longer citizens. They are no longer human beings. They are parasites. I'm never going to forget that. That's what drives me. And what drove me to support Kenny was Kenny really made me believe that he believed in equality. And so on that particular night, when something unexpected happened, when, when, when Kenny just melted down on my show, like an ice cream cone in July, and I was forced because he was just not telling the truth about anything. I was forced to confront him with the issue of equality in terms of how he dealt with equality in his life, in San Francisco. And I expected him to apologize for promoting the idea that LGBT people are not equal. They are so not equal to everyone else that they don't even deserve to have visits from their spouses in the hospices they're dying in. I have never in my life seen anything as egregious and ugly from a politician who won my heart, who stole my heart, 
on the issue of equality. Okay, so people are going to say, well, well, Chuck's doing a lot of talking about Jason Kenney here, but Jason Kenney's not leading the UCP. Jason Kenney's not the premier of Alberta. You right. you, you worked, yeah. both of us worked a long time uh, uh, alongside uh, Alberta's premier, Danielle Smith, who obviously is looking for her first uh, official mandate, if you want to call it that. She's looking to win her first general election. And, and the polls show, I'll let people know that we're going to be talking to Philippe Fournier, uh, Fournier tomorrow, uh, a, a poll analyst, and we'll get into these numbers uh, reported uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Albertans uh, pessimistic uh, and leaning toward voting Notley over Danielle Smith shows uh, some of the polling numbers. It's it's positive if you're an NDP supporter. It, it goes to show that the United Conservatives, led by Premier Smith, have their work cut out for them. But 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 again, five and a half months is an eternity in politics. So so you're going, you're endorsing Notley over Danielle Smith. How come? It's called leadership. Uh, I don't favor chaos, and this is, sorry, the small C conservative in me. I believe in Canada. I believe in, in order, okay? I believe in peace. And so, no, I don't believe in chaos. I don't believe in someone who is, in fact, threatening to leave Canada. I want someone to be the premier of Alberta to lead Canada. I want Alberta to lead among provinces in this country, I know my friends in Manitoba and British Columbia and Ontario and Alberta say, well, you're favoring Manitoba. Yes, yes, I am. Man Manitoba, Alberta has been my best friend. Uh, Manitoba has become my, my adopted home. I understand that. But Alberta has been my home several times, and Alberta has given me the most important breaks in my life. So, yes, I've got a special place in my heart for Alberta, and I want Alberta to lead the country. I don't want Alberta to leave the country. So in terms of pro-Canada, in terms of pro-order, in terms of being a professional CEO, moderate and balanced, I see, and this is a recruitment thing, that's what elections are about, okay? We talk about the parliamentary system and, uh, you know, the, 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 the MLA for a particular riding is uh, an equal to all the others. I'm sorry, that's, that's not true. Uh, the MLA who happens to be Rachel Notley and the MLA uh, who happens to be Danielle Smith are not, are not equals. They are the leaders of their parties. It's a hiring decision, ultimately, between Danielle Smith and Rachel Notley. And for the reasons that I've just stated, much of it having to do with Canada, much of it having to do with no chaos, much of it having to do with being a responsible, moderate professional, I perceive that Rachel Notley is a better hire than Danielle Smith. This has nothing to do with me being an NDPer. I'm not an NDPer. This has certainly nothing to do with me being a pro UCP -er because the night Jason Kenney melted down, I was done, done with supporting the UCP. And there is nothing that Danielle Smith has done to make me want to favor the UCP. And I, just, I don't think I can make it any clearer. Uh, yeah, than that. no, I, you, you've spelled it out. For people that will be looking for more specific insights or numbers, this is polling by Abacus data. 38% of decided voters polled by Abacus uh, third week of December. 38% uh, said they would vote NDP if an election were held immediately. 32% said they would vote for the United Conservatives. So a six-point lead, six months out for the NDP. A quarter of voters undecided, which is not unusual. Uh, that's always an interesting chunk. A quarter, uh, a quarter of voters is, is significant. Asked who they'd prefer as premier, it's tighter. Uh, Charles, 52% say Notley, 48% say Smith. So you got a four-point differential there. But get this, just one in four Albertans polled say that they think the province is headed in the right direction. 54%, more than half, say that it's headed in the wrong direction. And that's an indictment on leadership, to be sure. Smith does, Premier Smith does uh, appear to be walking back a, a lot of the big talk that it took her to get elected as leader of the party and to become Premier, uh, in particular, this Alberta Sovereignty Act. And I think that we'll see, with every passing week, less and less focus on that type of inflammatory stuff. In particular, I think, because that doesn't resonate with urban voters and the NDP, obviously, and the UCP are going to be seeing a dogfight down in Calgary. Well, uh, you know, she can walk back all she likes. Uh, uh, the idea that she doesn't as strongly believe in something in January of uh, you know, 2023 that she claimed to believe strongly in uh, just before Christmas of 2022. I mean, it, it doesn't... Um, not, not buying it, you know, and uh, I don't want to dwell on, on on the fact that Danielle and I have been friends, and on a personal level, she's been nothing but kind to me. 
Uh, I don't want to dwell on that. I want to focus like a laser on on, on politics and, and management and leadership mm -hmm. because I never want to make the mistake again that I made with, with Jason Kenney. And I'm not worshipping Rachel Notley at all uh, or her party. I'm simply saying that in terms of hires, CEO, you know, CEO of the government, Alberta, I perceive that Rachel Notley is more qualified to be a CEO of the government of Alberta than Danielle Smith. And it just, as I say, I, I can't make it any clearer than that. I, I, I In closing, were, did, were you even a little surprised at, at how your tweet took off? Like, I'm just reading it right yeah. now, like 697,000 yeah, something, something views. I mean, uh, you know, views so, right? Something has happened. You can't, I think it's beyond 700,000 views right now. Yeah. Uh, so this is getting uh, a lot of attention. And yes, of course, it's getting attention from uh, some of the people who are fiercely uh, partisan UC peers, and I, I, I totally yeah. get that. Yeah. But there's something in the air. I think change is in the air in Alberta. Some of this may have to do with the pandemic. Some of this may have to do with the convoy. Some of this may have to do with all of the other chaos. I just sense that that people in many parts of the country, but especially in Alberta, are craving normal. And that's why I stated in, in the endorsement that, that I, you know, I'm endorsing Rachel Campaign's campaign to return Albertans to normalcy. Mm. Okay. I just think that, that, that people are fed up with, with, with the whack jobs having, frankly, uh, too much airtime, stealing too much oxygen, and they just want to get back to normal. No drama. Just normal. Yeah. Uh, isn't it funny? I mean, the, the progressive conservatives through the 90s used that normal uh, word uh, for their campaigns and, and, and essentially to to sort of rally their troops for I, I just see a small irony in, in normal being used against the conservatives <laughs> well, now. That, that, you know, that that's the, that's the world I come from. Yeah. I mean, you that know, was Ralph Klein's from, thing, right? From, Martha yeah, and I Henry, the, Peter the fiercely and normal. Ralph yeah. Klein and, you know, I mean, I, I, that, that's, that's why I say it. this isn't about me doing some. What do you want to, in biblical terms, road to Damascus conversion? I mean, I haven't become an NDPer. I think that what what we're probably going to see uh, in the next uh, few months is a, a coalition of sorts. It won't be a formal coalition, but I think a lot of people who have, uh, over their lifetimes, voted for the PCs, as I did, in regardless of which province I was living in, uh, are saying that for now they want to give this UCP thing a, a timeout, and for now they they would want to give Rachel Notley a, a four years. And who knows where, where these same people will be four years from now. But I think for now, they, they believe in, in pushing the pause button on this. Uh, I'll try to be nice about this, this, this UCP experiment, which doesn't feel like conservatism to um, to many of us. Eric Denhoff uh, joined us uh, in 2021 on the show uh, and uh, or was it early 22. Doesn't matter. Anyway, former deputy minister. And a lot of people who know politics know that the deputy ministers are oftentimes the ones doing all the heavy lifting when it comes to policy and implementation. And so Denhoff knows what he's talking about. Regardless, he replied to your tweet. Uh, I thought this was a good one a couple of days ago. He says, at some point, common sense people on every part of the political spectrum take a look at the choices and forget pure partisan politics and just advocate for good government and he says it looks like that's what's happening out there he's talking about alberta he says a good call he's talking about you by a great patriotic canadian that from eric denhoff couldn't say it better myself uh, mr denhoff um I, i've got um wow well, uh he's gonna go in, I, I don't want to i don't want to you know I just want to say thank you. I just, I'm very honored. I'm very, very mm. tired. I didn't see that one, uh, Ryan. You took me by. Uh, I can tell. Me as you can tell. Uh, yeah. Very. Uh, for Mr. Denhoff to say that, and for people who don't know who Mr. Denhoff is, uh, do, do, do some research. He's um, straw that stirs the drink. He's, he's he is the straw. He has been a great uh, public servant, an exceptional public servant, and uh, he cares um, deeply yeah. about this country. And I'm just moved that he would. Uh, he would say that about former chief you. federal so, negotiator. Uh, yeah. yeah. So there you go. Oh, look at that. You know, you don't get to catch Chuck on his heels. Every, but but there we go. We we managed to uh, <laughs> my New Year's resolution. It, it, it's 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 happened on January catch him 3rd. once a day. I'll catch him once a day. There you go. <laughs> uh, it was October 20th of 2021, by the way, when Denhoff joined us on Real Talk. We'll have to get him back on the show. Charles, you mean time. We'll talk to you next Monday again. A happy new year to you. And thanks for making time for us as always. Happy New Year to you, uh, my very best friend. Thank you. Oh, wow. Love it, buddy. Love you. That's Charles Adler. It's an emotional show back here. There you go. It's good. Uh, All the feels uh, yeah. early in January of this new year. I, mm -hmm. I wanted, wanted to pop in on the, uh, I love this from Shalane. She says, I love Charles, but he needs to fix his real talk. Snap back 
cap brim. I love <laughs> I love the way he rocks his brim. There's different ways to rock the brim. Yeah. His is just flat. like the, the fold. He's you got the, the fold. tent fold yeah, in yeah. the middle. There's the, my brother Jonas ha, ma, has mastered the slight curve. Mm, I like you know? that too. Uh, I, I, my caps, I wear, I wear like kind of like the flat brim. I'm flat or slight, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's I, my I like go-to. the flat brim, but yeah. I've, I've been told that I might be outgrowing the. I'm, I might be a little too old to be rocking the flat. I, brim. And some people have that extreme curve. You know, the cur- It's just perfectly Hardcore, molded to their. Yeah. I had a friend in high school. He used to tape it around a two liter bottle. Every time really? he got a new hat, leave it there for a week. Then he'd take it off and put it on. And I'd be <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was his. That to me, that style comes to me al- along with a tin of Copenhagen in the back pocket. <laughs> it definitely does. Is that like the the hard? The hard curve and the and the Copenhagen. Don't lot, chew, kids. A lot of hey there, buds, from yeah. this guy. Yeah. Hey there, bud. <laughs> Going for a rip there, bud? <laughs> Alicia on the live chat says, no drama, just normal. She says, let's put that on a shirt. Who else is feeling this deeply? Mm-hmm. Uh, Tony says, I laughed when Charles was accused of being a woke lefty. I guess some people just don't get it. Yeah, he's, he, I mean, uh, obviously, hard. I think some people were surprised to see him go on. I was excited he did it right before his first mm-hmm. Real Talk appearance of 2023 um, because it, it is significant. Like he was, like I said, it was, he, was, he was the conservative voice on conservative talk radio mm-hmm. in Canada for like decades. Um, and, uh, and obviously a lot of people were piling on him, but, but I love it. He, he's a man of conviction. He says what he thinks. He doesn't give a rip what, what people are going to think about his political views or his yeah. personal convictions. That's the point. It's hard these days though, because people are so entrenched in them because people keep receipts now. So yeah. like if you yeah. say something and it's different than an opinion you had three, four, five, ten 10 years ago, yeah. you're going to see it. You're going to see it come back. You're going to see your replies to the comments I got called out earlier this year. It happens, right? Do you yeah. remember Nora Loretto when she joined us on oh, the yeah. show? And we were talking about like, um, you know, like on, basically online poison. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what we officially called the round table, but it was like it was it was like mobs, online mobs. Mm-hmm. And we were talking. It, it was it was uh, we had, we had uh, Erica Eiffel was on that panel. We had a round table, um, three women and in, in journalists and pundits in Canada that that had been targeted. Uh, essentially for things that they had said and trolls. And, and, and I oftentimes think the word troll is not uh, adequate enough because it sort of gets, oh, these trolls. Oh, the trolls. It's like, no, these, these were like death threats. And, yeah. And like, I mean, this was, we're talking like, you know, these, these are uh, obviously very serious, deadly serious type developments. And uh, Nora was on and we were, we were talking about her online critics and in particular her uh, comments immediately following or on the heels of that horrific and tragic Humboldt Broncos bus crash. Which was an emotionally charged like to couple, say the least 24 to 48 hours on all social media right you so. know and uh and and after that and it was a great round table and encouraged people to check it out mid mid last year uh a real talker reached out and said ryan i was disappointed that you didn't bring up your own tweet to nora mm-hmm. and i had sort of a vague memory of sending it not a crystal clear one but when i saw it yeah. and it wasn't like to be clear it didn't threaten harm or anything like that mm-hmm. but i i did I was pretty harsh. Mm-hmm. I wrote it with a flamethrower. And uh, and uh, that, that bus crash uh, had resonated with us personally. Some mm-hmm. family friends had, 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 had been horrifically impacted by it. And, uh, but the point is, uh, when I saw that tweet that I had sent, mm-hmm. that I hadn't seen for a number of years, I went, oof. Can and uh, and Nora and I, and to her credit, had a had a, a, a beautiful and meaningful exchange privately yeah. after that, and and talked about it a little bit. But she's very but, bright. I love her stuff. But the like, receipts are uh, yeah. receipts are there, and that's a good thing. I mean, I don't think we just saw it here in this interview right now. Charles doesn't mind being being. Uh, he doesn't mind talking about no. where where he was and where he is now, and and, and the I road love in Nora's between. tweets too. But that one she put out, I was like, "Whoa, this is a little." So it's okay. The tweet get- was about. She basically said, and and I'm paraphrasing. We don't need to get into this too much. But she basically, basically said, like, white men. If they weren't privileged yeah. white boys that yeah. were killed in the crash, would there be as much? And of it was it? a little too soon when she was doing all this. So I got it. But like, it, I'm so scared for like young kids. Growing up in high school right now, like think of all the dumb shit you did growing up Mm. and everyone's going to have receipts now. Like, I feel like we were that last generation who kind of grew up without cell phones, the Internet, and then got it later in life when we were maturing. And I'm I'm just so scared for kids these days who like they can't make any mistakes Mm. like because you're going to get called on it. You're going to see it. Yeah, so. Sapria Devetti will join us on Friday in, in her regular spot. And of course, she and I will connect uh, tomorrow on Seriously. You can check out that weekly podcast we do at seriouslypod.com. She had a great piece 
uh, you know, she does a lot of writing, uh, mm-hmm. obviously, ac- across the country and a number of different publications and platforms. And she had a great piece saying uh, just a few days ago that it's time that as a nation, uh, we put our kids uh, mental and physical health ahead of profits for big tech. Yeah. And uh, and so we'll get into that. That's that's certainly uh, relevant to what we're talking about. I love this from Dwayne. A question on the live chat. He says, "How come the conservatives in Alberta were allowed to get away with doing, uh, you know, uh, being responsible for the mo- the costliest debacles uh, for so many years?" The answer is simple, Dwayne. It's because Alberta has been flush for so many years. Uh, nobody cares when 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 somebody's worth, you know, like you see, I don't know, like a celebrity or a professional athlete worth like you know a hundred million dollars and, mm-hmm. and then you find out that their their watch was two million i, I think of like conor mcgregor who had like a <laughs> he has like a lamborghini yacht his yacht is a lamborghini yeah. or like he, he was flashing his new watch over the holidays a new rolex check it nobody cares when you have a lot of money yeah. nobody questions the expenditures can't just buy a t-shirt when it's times are tight thousand dollars when t-shirt. times are tight <laughs> that's when people question the expenditures uh, but some great insights here as well uh, on the chat, and I appreciate this. Kathy quite rightfully points out people grow and change their opinions as they get older. It's part of being an adult. Kathy with the bullseye there. But she then, says, I can't imagine not being willing to learn and grow and constantly being stuck in one mindset only. But then you're a flip-flopper. You know? it's but, that's, like, but what it's, does flip-flopping mean? Like you change your mind? When did changing your mind become a bad thing? I know. That's what I mean. Like you, your, your opinion has shaped you know, into something else. And yeah. So, so I I'm, think that's the fear people have, though. And I think that's what I was saying is people get so entrenched in their views these days and they don't want to change them because they're afraid. They're afraid of the receipts. They're afraid to change. They're afraid to be called a flip flopper hmm. when really we should be doing the opposite. We should be trying to like, you know, yeah, take sure. it all in and sure. Grow. Erica says, I mean, and there's a great conversation. I love the conversations that happen in our live chat. This is great. Did you see right when we signed on? Most people will hear this later in the day. You, you, you'll live stream this or download it at your convenience. But of course, we have this uh, amazing community that joins us as we live stream every morning, 830 Mountain, 1030 AM Eastern. You see everybody wishing each other a happy new year off the top today, like yeah, reconnecting great. and <laughs> gathering together. And, and so Alicia chimes in and says, did I just hear Mr. Adler endorse Rachel Notley? What the, and then, you know, and, uh, uh, people are talking about living your truth and speaking your truth and, and that, and, and that's great. Of course, if you're watching this later on YouTube, you can watch in those uh, live comments how the show plays out. And, and of course, I, I, it's amazing to see friendships happening here, which is something that's really special. Every Tuesday, our friends at Leading Edge Physiotherapy remind us about the importance of innovation. Uh, We celebrate, courtesy of Leading Edge, those that are driving conversations forward and improving services around us. We call it the Leading Edge. And in this, a very special New Year's edition of the Leading Edge, we want to take a look at Forbes' brand new report on the top five healthcare trends in 2023. So here's five things to look out for in 2023. This is how healthcare is expected to change. Number one. The proliferation of AI in healthcare. Artificial intelligence is being used to include drug discovery, like predicting outcomes of clinical trials, maybe even potential side effects of new drugs. Analysis of medical imagery, like using computer vision algorithms to spot early warning signs of disease in x-rays or MRI scans. Uh, AI is also being used to detect and treat neurological disorders like Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's. Here's another trend, remote healthcare, virtual hospitals, healthcare communities, and telehealth. I know not everyone's a huge fan, but but check this out. Obviously, remotely delivered healthcare increased a lot during the pandemic, right? And, And many patients and providers have realized that for a lot of conditions, care can be more efficient and cost effective from a distance. Also, familiar environment, your home and proximity to your family can have a really positive effect on patient outcomes. So look for an increase in things like telemedicine, like video calling your doctor or Johnny, get this, even a surgeon carrying out surgery on a patient in a remote location using robotic technology. That's what they say is going to increase in 2023. Number three, retail health care. Uh, researchers at Forrester, and, and this is a story out of the U.S., okay? Maybe less common in Canada, but they say the amount of health care conducted through retail outlets is going to double in the next year. That includes things, things like uh, blood tests, vaccines, and medical checkups mm-hmm. at Walmart and Amazon. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Number four, wearable medical devices. Expect to see more and more of these over the next 12 months. Simple devices like tracking vital signs, heart rate, blood oxygen levels. And then maybe it gets a little bit more sophisticated. Smart watches, 
that can that can uh, scan like ECGs, uh, smart textiles. This blows my mind. They can detect blood pressure, predict the risk of heart attacks. You imagine wearing a smart sweater mm-hmm. that could predict risk of heart attack. And of course, uh, smart gloves that can reduce the tremors suffered by patients with Parkinson's disease. And number five, more personalized health care. They're calling it precision medicine. And this is going to be the story. Says Forbes, in 2023, patients will have more opportunities to receive healthcare delivery personalized specifically to them uh, based on factors like age, genetic, or risk factor, as opposed to a one size fits all approach. You can read the full list and learn more at Forbes.com. And don't forget that every Tuesday, you can catch. Innovation. Learn more about who's moving the world forward around us on The Leading Edge, presented by Leading Edge Physiotherapy. Life shouldn't hurt. Hmm. So on the chat, there's there's a lot of people that are still, that, that were really curious about the hot sauce. <laughs> and and, and uh, there were a lot of people that were, that, yeah, they, they, they were really curious to see, but, but people talking about decluttering and, uh, you know, like TD says, they've been doing it since the beginning of December, boxes and bags ready to donate. But I love this from Nicole. Nicole says, if I haven't used it in a year, it's gone. Mm. She says, like, I need to throw away my pre-baby clothes. My kid is 16. It's time. I get it. I heard a great strategy from from a, uh, a sort of a minimalism type expert, like mm-hmm. an expert on decluttering, not Marie Kondo level, but like, you know, and they said that the best thing you can do in particular with your clothes, because a lot of us keep our clothes more than anything oh, else. I'm the worst. So you flip all the hangers around. So the way that your, your, your dress shirts and your blazers or whatever it is, whatever you hang in your closet, your jeans, your pantaloons, whatever it is, John, you flip all the hangers around, okay? And then when you wear it, so do you do this like starting oh, now? You, you got to do it now. Forward. When you wear it, you put it the right way or you put it the way you would normally hang it. Okay. And on December 31st or at the <clears> end of the year, anything that's still hanging the quote wrong way gets donated. <sighs> I love it. See, I don't. I'm not a big clutter or a hoarder, as you would say. But the clothes thing is collector. Bad. Yeah, I would <laughs> collector. You, but I went in the basement literally to put the Christmas tree away yesterday, and I was like, I have a hanger in the basement by the laundry, and there was radio shirts from like three jobs ago. Hang. I'm like, I am never gonna wear this again but you know that's the thing like people keep they kind of again collect but some of them are like golf tees and stuff and and long sleeves like just too much of them right and it's just i I need to get rid of little things like that because i haven't worn them i looked at them i'm like i haven't worn this in six years man i've had some funny moments where i think especially our older kid wyatt he's seven and you save these things you're like one day when i have a kid and then you have a kid and then you start to think, well, when he's old enough, I'll give him these things. And I'm and I'm just because I have so much sentimental value attached. Mm-hmm. Like my Cabbage Patch kid, his name is Marcus Blair. You have it? Oh, dude. And so he he has a referee this outfit is- with a whistle. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. This is what I'm talking about. And my teddy bear, like my original teddy bear from when I was a baby. Things. Oh, dude. And so I've got all these like stuffies and stuffed animals, and not maybe maybe like five of them. And so I remember like the moment of presenting Wyatt, my cabbage patch kid, <laughs> Marcus. Well, he was like, all right, like <laughs> didn't care at all. Doesn't care at all. Or I remember like, you know, from time to time when you're a public facing personality, you can wind up, for example, on the cover of a magazine. Yeah. And so wound up on the covers of a few of a few magazines. And, and I was like, I'm going to save these because Wyatt will get a real kick out of these when he's older. No. Doesn't care at all. Doesn't care at all. And I'm starting to realize that all the things that I have imposed sentimental value onto, not maybe not all of them, but most of them mm. r- really do not have that inherent sentimental value for other people. And you can't take it personally. No. That's, that's and I don't take it personally. I actually think it's funny. You know, like yeah. 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 My my grandparents, my 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 parents, my mom have given me things and I'm like, oh, cool. And goes in a drawer. Yeah. <laughs> People are talking about some of the things they found. Like, how, how about this from uh, an audience member says a few years ago for our Christmas hamper program, uh, we had somebody. This is horrible. Okay, well, this is going to kickstart a conversation, I'm sure. We had somebody donate a box of, of cup of soup. You know, the, the cup of soup there? Mm-hmm. And uh, they said it had no best before date. 
so just to be sure, we opened the box and there was a cardboard coupon inside that had despi- that had expired on December 31st, 1984. <laughs> now, is it a coupon or a coupon? Oh, sure. I notice people have. Yeah, it's probably a coupon, yeah. isn't it? It's a 1984. Coupon. So, yeah, OK. But, but does it's cup coupon. of soup go bad? See, this is where this so. is where my mind goes. Does it go bad? Does Mr. Noodles go bad? I think like if there's nuclear fallout, we're all eating Mr. Noodles and. But this is the this Can't and this mean. is when when we're doing this minimalism game, you're going to want to be responsible as well, right? It's like we're not going to go into the pantry and find all the expired food and then donate it to the food bank, right? If you're going to make a donation to the food bank, make sure that that you're not doing it that way. And, and I'm speaking to myself included. Our friends at the Dairy Queens of Northwest Edmonton and Sherwood Park, number one, wanted us to thank you, Real Talkers, for an incredible 2022. They wanted us to reiterate to you how much they absolutely love when you're passing through the drive through or when you're up at the counter, letting them know that you're there because of Real Talk. And I am thrilled to let you know that for the entire month of January, at the Dairy Queens in Palisades, Nemeo, Newcastle, Westmount, and Baseline Road, John, the DQ Sandwiches, and the dilly bars. I did a backflip this morning when I The saw boxes them. of them. Oh, the six packs are buy one, get one free. No strings attached. So, ladies and gentlemen, shout it from the rooftops. <laughs> it is 12 dilly bars for the price of six. 12 DQ sandwiches for the price of six for the entire month of January at the Dairy Queens of Northwest Edmonton and Sherwood Park. We also wanted to remind you that if you are planning on transforming your outdoor space this spring into this summer, if you already have visions of your backyard packed with friends, packed with people you care about, admiring your new pizza oven, right? Or maybe uh, gathering under the pergola, maybe admiring your new water feature. That work can start today on the planning side, the permitting side with Mike and his team at Eden Landscaping. You can check out what they do, their portfolio and their services at landscapeedmonton.ca. Don't forget, a lot of times, if you want the perfect fit, the construction materials that'll take your guest's breath away, sometimes supply chain issues mean that it's best to order these months in advance. Don't wait until the ground thaws to get in touch with Eden Landscaping. Do it today. And of course, you can find them under the Sponsors tab on our website. And a shout out to those of you that have maybe a little bit of sticker shock when it comes to your utilities. Over the past couple of months, we get it. I've been running some space heaters. I understand that the electricity bills are higher than we're accustomed to, and the same goes with natural gas, especially with rates where they're at. But you don't have to pay as much as you probably are right now. You can take your business to Park Power, friendly local utilities provider, compare rates in two minutes or less online, and ultimately wind up keeping more money in your jeans. That's the best part of dealing with Park Power. Another thing we love is that you choose which charity you want to benefit. Yeah, that's right. A power provider, electricity, natural gas, and internet that gives 10% of profits back to nonprofits in their community. It's why we're proud to partner with Park Power at parkpower.ca. I lost an argument over the Christmas holiday about the, the heat degree. With what do you mean? Wife. What do you mean? <laughs> it's just, who keeps it cooler? Well, I'm, Her or I'm you? 21. I'm like 21's the highest. That's classic room you know, temperature. Let's, let's, let's put on sweatpants if it needs to go. High. She had it. Uh, 23. 23. 23. Some days 24. Wow. And I was like, is this what happens like when I'm 24? during the day? <laughs> and uh, I lost. So now now it's at 22. We kind of. We met in the middle. So you know what you uh, need to do is get get her one of those heavy blankets. These these are, have you ever experienced one of these She's things? Always in blankets, sweats, cozy things. So I don't know. You already thought about that. She just loves being warm. But I was like, <laughs> twenty four is hardcore. <laughs> have you ever seen Daddy's Home too with uh, Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell? I don't think so. There's a point where one of the kids turns up the heat, and every the, the grandpa, the all the dads go insane about it, you know, because even a few degrees of heat change can. And when yeah. You, when you were talking about par power there, I was just thinking, I wonder. Although I think if if I had to choose, uh, if I if I were to have a life partner that would prefer it to be more warm than average or cooler than average in the house, I would take more warm. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, I'm not. We're not talking cost anymore. I'm talking comfort. 
you know, there's a lot of people that are like, you know, people joke about like, dad's always turning the thermostat down to 18, 18 or 19. For me, like cold feet in the house is the worst. So I always want to keep it like nice and comfortable. So typically, know? according to science, Ryan, men do run hotter than women. So this is why. Yeah, that might depend on age, though. Yeah. Although I don't think that people need to hear it's a lot of things like weight, muscle mass. Yeah. But in general, like men tend to run hotter. And that's I think this is why we're always having this debate ah. where women want to turn it up and men are like, please. Yeah. Even a few degrees of heat can affect our. You're a smart man. Though. You let her win. I, I Smart man. I let her do it. Smart does. man. I love Start her. the year off. On I the love right foot on the right foot. You hear this story out of Buffalo, New York. Oh, uh, well, is, yeah. technically Williamsville, New York. I loved this story. It filled my heart through the holidays, and, and I immediately sent it to you. Well, I sent it in our Slack channel, so it didn't bother you. But I said, this is going to be our positive reflections for our first day back. No doubt about it. Want to get to the story, but first I want to remind you that typically it falls on a Monday, unless it's a long weekend like we just enjoyed. Every week, our friends at Kubi Renewable Energy, Western Canada's biggest solar installer, present positive reflections. It's a great way for us to focus on the things that are restoring our faith in humanity, quite frankly, filling our bucket, so to speak. The random acts of kindness, the people paying it forward. Well, this is an amazing story. Williamsville, New York in particular, uh, a tour group out of South Korea was on its way to beautiful Niagara Falls when it became stuck. The van got wedged into a a snowbank outside a home in Williamsville, New York. Uh, where Alexander Campagna and his wife, Andrea, happen to live. A dentist and a nurse practitioner, for what it's worth. And uh, so here's the deal. They're, they were waiting this blizzard out themselves, John. Obviously walloped by snowfall. A lot of the roads were closed. Everything was shut down. And so they had stocked their fridge. And they were planning for a quiet holiday weekend indoors. We're talking like the night before Christmas Eve, okay? Okay. So it's Friday at 2 p.m. The storm is swirling. Snow's piling up. Nobody's moving on the roads, and there's a knock on the door. And uh, it's, it, it's these tourists uh, from South Korea. They're asking for shovels. <laughs> to, they're trying to, they got to dig their passenger van out of a ditch. Uh, but the campaigners basically said, nah, like, you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going anywhere. Come on in. So check this out. They take in the entire group of people, nine tourists from South Korea, they take them in for the entire weekend. How great was this? And so they start cooking meals together. They, 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 they say that uh, that as Buffalonians, this was a no-brainer. I didn't know what you call people from Buffalo. Is that it? Buffalonians. They said they were proud Buffalonians. They filled their three-bedroom house. They had sleeping bags and air mattresses out. And their guest bedroom was full. Keep in mind, like they had no idea who these people were, right? Yeah. There, there were parents with their daughter. There was a college student. Their friends, a lot of them, uh, great English speakers. So they, they said that like the conversation around the dinner table was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. They spent the weekend swapping stories. Of course, they watched the Buffalo Bills game, the Bills beating the Chicago Bears Christmas Eve. How great was that? And then the guests decided to do a traditional Korean home cooked meal. And so they they had like spicy stir fried pork and duck dory tang and a chicken stew and just wonderful stuff. And uh, it turns out that the Campagnas are big fans of Korean cuisine. Ah. So they had, and see, this is why you can never throw out your hot sauce. They had Korean red pepper paste already there. They, You know why I had to get to this story, right? They had mirin and soy sauce and sesame oil and chili flakes, and they had kimchi already in the house and a rice cooker, and it just all worked out perfectly. This was, like, manifested. This was absolutely amazing. Uh, one of their guests, uh, Mr. Choi, uh, told the New York Times, quote, it was kind of like fate. He said, these were the kindest people I ever met. A fully stocked Korean kitchen and unhesitating hospitality. He said, we destroyed so much food. <laughs> uh, the campaigners, for uh, for their part, said that the unexpected guests were a total delight and the best Christmas gift that they can remember. A unique blessing. And get this, they've planned a visit to South Korea. <laughs> They're going to go visit their new friends who That's intend awesome. to return the hospitality. Absolutely love this story. You can read it in its entirety on the New York Times website, nytimes.com. And of course, don't forget, you can get your free solar quote today by visiting kubienergy.ca. We've got a great week in store on the show. Sahil Bloom is going to join us in the next couple of days uh, to talk about the life hacks that he's most intrigued by in 2023. And tomorrow, Wednesday, Philippe Fournier will join us 
political columnist and poll analyst. We'll take a look at some of the top political stories he's expecting to keep an eye on over the next number of months. It's great to be back with you, Real Talkers. Thanks for downloading the show today. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Real Talk is hosted by Ryan Jesperson, Executive Producer Josh Dunford, Technical Producer John Hicks, General Manager Katie Cook Chivers, Account Coordinator Lawrence Durlego, Human Resources Lena Shepherd, Website Design Mike Johnston, VoiceOver by me, Terry Skelton. Real Talk's editorial board is Sapria Dubetti, Ahmed Ali, Brandy Morin, Anne Castleman, Corey Hogan, Harmon Candola. Catherine O'Neill, and Chris Henderson. Member Emerita, Julie Rohr. Real Talk is recorded in Edmonton, Alberta on Treaty 6 territory, the traditional and ancestral territory of the Cree, Dene, Blackfoot, Soto, and Nakota Sioux, home to the Métis settlements and the Métis Nation of Alberta. Real Talk is a relay project. For more, check out ryanjesperson.com.